Today I had an awesome idea for a video for a CGC weekly episode and off the top of my head I got a few things together. I got my friend Tim to help me record and we're gonna go do some drone photo scanning. So let's get out of the studio. All right, so we are currently on our way to somewhere where we can photo scan with a drone. Uh, we got the drone in the back seat right now and but yeah, so this is going to be mostly experimental. I'm not very familiar with photo scanning myself, so this is going to be a learning experience for me and hopefully something that you can learn from as well. Uh, so anyway, we are currently on our way to a giant old um, windmill in Geneva, Illinois, where the uh, CG Cookie Studio is located. We just picked up some stuff in the studio and uh, we're on our way there. Oh, dang it, there's a park person here. I feel like they're not gonna be too fond of it, us flying a drone about. We might have to go somewhere else. I don't know. I don't know, what do you think, Tim? Think we should give it a shot or you think we should go find like a silo somewhere? Yes? Okay, <laughs> we'll give it a shot then. Sweet deal. Are you calling me trash? I hate you. <laughs> this actually is probably a really good thing to start scanning. The one thing I'm a little bit worried about up there is see the, the thin area where the windmill would be, like the, the cross area that uh, is a little bit less than desirable and it might come out kind of bad. But hopefully we can get the base structure at least. Stop recording the freaking news. So uh, I guess one thing that's kind of important about being out here in this kind of weather, as you can see it's kind of cloudy and glum outside, is uh, it's got very uniform lighting uh, so there aren't any harsh shadows being cast on the uh, windmill itself, which is uh, ideal in this situation. So I think, let's set up up here where it's nice and flat and that'll be our takeoff point. So all right, so in order to do this, we are going to be using, I forgot the SD card in the car. I hope I never reach that point in my life. Anyway, so we will be scanning with a uh, Phantom 3 standard, right? So it's pretty much your standard drone. It's, I guess like the most cliche drone when it comes to drones. Uh, camera drones at least. Uh, so yeah, warming up. All right, so again, we came out here on a nice cloudy day because it's got those soft shadows. And we're gonna try and get just about as many pictures of this as we possibly can. I might only do the front half here because uh, I don't want to go too far into the back because, I don't know, I don't want to lose sight of the drone, I don't want to get yelled at, and I you know, ultimately just want to have a fun time, not a stressful time. Three, two, one. And we have lift off. Sweet. Okay. So, um, one thing I am going to do here is, let's see if you can see my screen. Um, I'm going to set this to manual exposure. So the idea is we want to get the same uh, image quality throughout. So there's that. I'm just gonna basically make a few passes and try and get as much detail with the drone as I possibly can. And that's a wrap, folks. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we're gonna take this back and we're gonna get things processed and hopefully they come out somewhat decently. Hopefully. I think I got somewhere around 50 to 60 photos, uh, all from different angles. But we'll see if, uh, if computers can work their magic. And if not, then, well, we will have learned that we need more photos or better photos from further away or, you know, whatever. So, anyway, back to the studio. <laughs> All 
All right, welcome back to the studio. And um, as you can see, I'm not in my normal spot. That's just because we had an event here over the weekend and I had to move my desk to the back room. So we're just gonna chill on the couch instead. So um, I tried with all of my might to find a way that I could convert these scans uh, into a 3D model or convert these photos into a 3D model using only free softwares. And I did find a few different ways that it is possible, but unfortunately none of them really worked with the quality of images that I got. I'm not sure whether that's just because their algorithms are worse or whether I'm just trash at photo scanning because that may very well be the case. Um, but I did find one software that could do it and that is Reality Capture. And I have to say, even though free softwares are great, Reality Capture really just blows all of them out of the water. So uh, I'm just gonna show you guys these steps, like individual steps that I took to go through and actually reconstruct these images into a 3D model using reality capture. And this actually goes along with a lot of other softwares as well. Um, so you're likely to be able to follow along even if you're not using reality capture. So anyway, what I first have to do here is I have to import the images. So I'm going to open up a new folder here and I'm just going to navigate to where I have them saved, which is just in the project files for this video. Um, and as you can see, I did end up taking 106 different photos of the windmill. Uh, that we're going to be working with in order to reconstruct this 3D model. So the first thing I want to do here is align the images. So I'm going to come up to, into the alignment tab here and click align images. And what alignment does is it basically searches for similar features in each of the, um, in each of the different images. So it says, hey, this one has this in the foreground and this in the background, and this one also has this in the foreground and this in the background. So, you know, these must be taken from a similar angle, and it uses that to solve for the different locations that the uh, camera might be available in. 35 seconds has finished, and it has already reconstructed part of our mesh here. This is called a sparse point reconstruction, and you'll notice it's called a sparse point reconstruction because the points are, you know, very sparse. There's not much uh, going on here, but that's pretty cool. So we have our sparse point, our sparse point cloud uh, calculated here, and you can see all of our individual cameras making up these lines on the outside of our mesh. So now we just need to uh, actually reconstruct it. Uh, make a dense point cloud, which fortunately Reality Capture does by itself automatically, and uh, then generate some geometry for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually shrink down this bounding box that kind of surrounds everything here. Uh, and this is used to determine what area is actually going to be reconstructed when we get to the reconstruction process. And we want a smaller area because then it will have to calculate less things um, and therefore is more ideal for our purposes. So I'm going to shrink this in quite a bit. Let me move it out a tad. Perfect, so there we have our bounding box now relatively well fit around the outside of our windmill. So we can go ahead and begin the geometry reconstruction. So if we come up to the reconstruction tab up at, top, up at the top here, sorry, I can't talk, and click normal detail, um, our normal detail mesh will begin generating. Now reconstruction is probably the longest process in the process of 3D scanning, uh, because it actually has to calculate the, the uh, what is it, the dense point cloud as well as the actual geometry for our um, model here. So it does take a little bit longer, but hopefully it won't take too terribly long because I don't want to be sitting here for too terribly long. All right, so here we go. As you can see, we now have our um, model reconstructed here, and it's just for now the mesh, uh, but we can go ahead and calculate textures if we want to, but I'm not going to do that quite yet because I want to first simplify the geometry. So in order to simplify the geometry, there's this awesome tool called the Simplify tool, which helps get rid of extra things or extra triangles in your scene, uh, so you aren't wasting too much data and your file isn't like 10 gigabytes as you try and import it into Blender. So I'm going to click Simplify down here at the bottom and simplification goes through and it doesn't take too long, fortunately, but it does reduce the amount of polygons significantly. The next thing I'm going to do is click Check Integrity, and this will basically check to make sure there are no uh, issues in the geometry of the model. And the last thing I'm gonna press is Check Topology, and that will also get rid of extra things um, in our scene. So there is a slight issue, or there are a few slight issues with our reconstruction here. You can see that the windmill did unfortunately 
Uh, we have some errors, or well, we did have some errors scanning the blades of the windmill. Uh, they are kind of glitchy. Uh, if we look down below the platform here, you can see that there is a hole in the middle of the platform. There are actually a few holes. And you'll also notice if we look at the windows, because the windows are reflective, it had some trouble computing the geometry for those. Uh, so we unfortunately lost the windows as well. So it kind of sucks, but you know, it still came out pretty good. And we definitely got that base geometry down really well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click texture in the upper left here and texture will basically apply a texture to our model so we can actually export it and then import it into Blender. And there we go. You can see that our model is now fully textured. So now we can export it and import it into Blender to do some actual stuff with it. So in order to export, we just come up to the mesh export option here in the uh, export tab and we can go ahead and export our mesh. Once the model was fully exported, I went ahead, opened up Blender, and I imported the model. But other than that, I applied the textures that we exported from Reality Capture to the high poly model and just rendered a quick little cinematic of it in just a basic HDRI environment from HDRI Haven. I threw a little color grading on there and uh, just wanted to show you guys what the end result was of trying to photo scan this colossal windmill. Here it is. Overall, I think the result was really just spectacular. Considering that was my first attempt of photo scanning something and I decided to photo scan an eight story tall windmill, I am very, very, very satisfied with how it came out. You know, I'm curious though, for those of you who are very familiar with photo scanning, do you have any advice for me or other people that are interested in photo scanning that would help us to get really awesome results out of our images? If you do, please leave a comment down below. I know I'd love to hear them, and I know that just about everybody else who's interested in this would love to hear them as well. 